Hello and welcome everyone to this software product line lecture and this lecture is going to be about runtime variability and about design patterns. So in this course, this is the first technique that we are discussing to actually implement variability in software. This course was mainly designed and created by Timo Kehre with the help of Elias Güter and myself, Thomas Thun. Enjoy the lecture. So we've talked already in the introductory lecture about software product lines. Uh, we talked about certain challenges that we face with product lines, and we will dive into more detail in this lecture. And the focus of this lecture is runtime variability, which is considered as one of the rather ad hoc approaches to variability. So not already perfectly aligning with the vision of a software product line. So this lecture is divided into three parts. First, we will talk about the configuration of runtime variability. That means that is more the outside perspective of runtime variability. So how can users of the software or developers of the software configure the software? In the second part, we will dive into the implementation details and see how can developers uh, realize this runtime variability. So we will see that there are different strategies to do that and what are the advantages and disadvantages of those. And in the third part of the lecture, we will talk about design patterns and design patterns, especially how can they support variability and why this is not necessary, uh, like uh, specific to runtime variability, but design patterns can be used for a large variety of different implementation techniques. So let's uh, start with the first part. And uh, let's start with a short recap. So what is the software product line? We talked about this in the first lecture already. Is software product line is a set of software intensive systems. We also call them products or variants, which means that these are uh, the systems that we are considering during development. They share a common managed set of features. We will talk about features uh, today in more detail, and we will also get uh, further examples of features. And they're typically in a domain. And today we are going to talk about the domain of graphs, of uh, uh, graph theory. And uh, the last part uh, is also considered, but more in the second part of the video, how can we create such reusable artifacts? So uh, coming back to this analogy, so uh, in the world of Lego uh, mannequin, uh, we have this variety uh, that we want to have, that we want to create for our customers, but we rather want to build this from particular pieces that we can combine in a certain way to realize uh, the required variability. How to implement software product lines. So this will be uh, the focus of this lecture, next lecture, but also some upcoming lectures afterwards. Uh, the key issues are how to enable systematic reuse of implementation artifacts, uh, how to connect these artifacts, and how to handle the variability explicitly in the source code. So what is variability all about? Variability is the ability to derive different products from a common set of artifacts. So variability gives us the possibility to actually create different products, products that differ in their features from some artifacts that are shared among different products. And another way to look at this is a, a, a variability intensive system. So this is a system that kind of uh, has a certain amount of uh, variability in there and a particular kind of such a variability syst uh, intensive system is a software product line. But the systems that we will look at today are not necessarily software product lines, but at least variability intensive systems. So they will have some variability in there. And the question is how to realize, <coughs> excuse me, that variability. So when it comes to variability, one of the uh, most influencing uh, parts, uh, how we realize the variability is the binding time. So variability offers us choices. So we can make certain choices 
uh, make certain decisions and uh, make use of certain choices. And then when we derive a product, when we create a product, uh, we need those decisions uh, at some point in time. And now it's a question, when, does, uh, when do we have to make those decisions? And uh, these are reflected in different binding times that we can have. And those range from uh, the binding time that is already like before actually starting the implementation, I'm already fixing what features are in there uh, until uh, even uh, reconfiguration at runtime. So the question is, uh, when does the binding happen, uh, by whom and how? So when are these, uh, these variabilities uh, put into practice, uh, by whom, uh, who is actually configuring uh, the software and how is this realized and how this is realized will be part of the second part of the lecture. Let's look into some examples that we consider as runtime variability. So the first example that I've brought here is the example of command line parameters. So the idea of command line parameters is you have a command line tool or at least a tool that can be uh, started from command line, right? It could be even have a fancy GUI and so on, but it, it is at least started from command line. So when we look at command line tools, they typically provide certain parameters. So over here we see uh, a Windows uh, directory listing. So there's a certain command, uh, a tool, a program that is called dir, and it has certain parameters. And the view that we see here is not the output of the program, but this is rather like a manual, a help page that helps us to understand what are the different uh, combinations of features that are out there. So these are certain uh, configuration options, and this is the view on how they are described and what is their meaning. But once we use this, um, we can provide different parameters, and then we have different uh, views as output. So we have two examples over here. Um, in one example, we looked at, um, we wanted to see what's the content in one directory named Windows, and we put certain parameters there to say uh, we only want to see certain files and folders. And we have another version down there, uh, which has an additional parameter um, minus C. And the question is, what is the difference? And the difference is actually very uh, subtle. And you, you can also uh, see this from the, uh, from the description on the left. So we can use this option. And the basic difference will be that this sign over here is not shown in some of the variants. So you see that this example shows that there are um, there's configuration going on. And this configuration can be very fine-grained and to a fa very fine-grained level. And this time, it basically influences the output and how it is shown. There are other ways how to uh, provide configuration options to um, actually change a program. And this is um, a preference dialog uh, from Eclipse, from the integrated development environment Eclipse. And what we can configure here, you see there are sh certain checkboxes over here. So we can configure how Java appears in the source code. And then we can make a certain selection over here to decide uh, what to choose uh, and how the how the GUI uh, will actually look like, and um, the programmers can actually configure the integrated development and to, uh, environment uh, to their needs. And <clears throat> why we have the same, uh, why we might have the same Eclipse installed, it might have a, a very different uh, look and feel for the users. So one of the options that is, has probably most effect is uh, whether we choose a dark layout um, uh, for uh, the appearance or not. Another way to configure uh, runtime variability are configuration files. So the idea of a configuration file is that you specify uh, the configuration, uh, which options you're actually choosing in a certain file. 
And there are different ways how to express this. There are different languages. This could be key value pairs, uh, where we have a key uh, and a value uh, somewhere written in the source code, which could be something look something like this. And in our case, it could be that certain uh, options are simply selected, meaning true, or they are not selected, simply meaning false. Uh, over here, we see a particular configuration file which is not following this key value structure, not necessary in all the cases, but it's rather uh, command line uh, parameters written into a certain uh, uh, file. And we can see we don't need to uh, add all these command line parameters every time we start the program, but we can rather say start Eclipse with this particular configuration uh, and then we can make use of this configuration every time we start the program. So these are different options, uh, how to uh, deal with variability. So what do these examples have in common? So again, we looked at command line parameters. So while starting the program on command line, we can configure those options to uh, uh, customize the program or the behavior of the program. We can have preference dialogue, so we have uh, and configuration uh, directly uh, supported in the program uh, as most programs come with a graphical user interface anyway. And <clears throat> we have another option that of uh, configuration files giving us uh, more options. So what are the differences here? Um, all these examples are ways to express configuration options. And there are different terms in the literature, but rather we consider this as configuration options. You have options how you can configure the program. So the program is typically the same uh, all the time, but we have certain options that we can provide to the program. So the behavior of the actual program that we are configuring is determined at runtime and interpreted at runtime. Uh, the choices offered by variability are decided at runtime. So uh, we not only specify uh, the configurations before runtime or sometimes even at runtime, but they are also decided at runtime. So the variability um, is not known at compile time, in, at least in most cases. We will see some um, uh, exceptions in the next part of the lecture. So configuration may actually happen Interactively, so as we've seen with command line parameters and with preference dialogues, it requires some kind of user interaction where we specify either the parameters on command line or we make our selection in the preference dialog. Or it can happen uh, in a non-interactive way, meaning that we specify this once in um, a configuration file and then do not need to change or adapt this every time. And I already mentioned that all these are different options to realize the vision of runtime variability. So runtime variability is decided after compilation, when the program is started, or during program execution. And we already see this in those examples. I mean, if you look at the preferences dialog in the middle, this is actually done, the reconfiguration happens during program execution, and there might be some uh, uh, certain settings where we even need a restart of the program, uh, here in this case of Eclipse, uh, the integrated development environment. Uh, but it, uh, in many cases, this is also considered as load time variability, for instance, if we look at runtime parameters. So the interesting part here is that in most cases, we do not know what is the actual uh, actual um, uh, variability uh, until runtime. So during compilation, we do not know the details what the user has selected for the configuration options.
So this is one of my favorite XKCD comics and uh, someone uh, yeah, had the idea of preventing graph theory from uh, being uh, invented in the first place because uh, we have many problems with graph theory and there's uh, a large theory and many researchers are working this and many students need to learn about graph theory. Also you need to do this because this actually didn't work out quite well. So we will talk about graphs. We will talk about graph theory not from a theoretical perspective but rather from a very uh, practical perspective. So imagine we have a simple library for graphs and it supports different data structures like directed and undirected edges, weighted and unweighted edges, colored and uncolored nodes. So why do we have all these different uh, data structures and different uh, all, this, all this variability going on? Of course, there are many applications where graph theory uh, could be used or graph algorithms can be used and graphs to represent data. But they all have different uh, requirements onto the data structures. So for instance, uh, in most cases, when I talk about navigation, I need directed edges because there are also um, uh, connections uh, that are not undirected uh, when you think of streets. So there are many applications. They all have requirements on data structures, but they also have requirements on algorithms. So we have different algorithms on graph uh, data structures. And for instance, uh, vertex numbering. So every vertex should get a specific number, a unique number. We have vertex coloring. So uh, different kinds of colorings uh, that are available and also related to the for color problem. Uh, we might want to compute the shortest pass. Uh, I already mentioned uh, if we want to navigate in a map, then we might be interested in the shortest pass or in the pass giving us the lowest energy consumption. And we have other algorithms like minimum spanning tree and so on. And when we think about this from a practical point of view, then not every time we use the graph library, we need all those features, but we need some features and need to configure this graph library to the needs of the certain application. So why do we choose graphs? As an example here in this lecture and also in some of the follow-up lectures, uh, the reason is that graphs can be easily visual visualized and we can see what are their features. So for instance, for the first feature, directed or undirected edges, we have these uh, two possible combinations. And if we bring a further feature into this, um, uh, into this uh, product line, into this variability, uh, then we can, of course, have four different combinations. We can either have undirected edges with weights uh, or without weights, and we can have directed edges without weights or with weights. And if we bring the coloring of nodes uh, in here, then we will have another two uh, uh, or another four uh, different products that we can imagine. And it could be that a certain uh, application requires a, a certain of these variants. And of course, the question is, how does it, how does it look like? Uh, what are the, the features? We rather see products over here. So the features that we've seen are visualized uh, over here. So we have directed edges, uh, or we might not have uh, directed edges. We have weighted uh, edges. Uh, we have colored nodes. Uh, and we might have white weighted um, edges and colored nodes at the same time. So what we see on top here is the configuration. And this is a very typical way how to define configurations. We just specify all those features that are selected. So we not say directed and not undirected, but we rather just say, OK, directed is chosen, uh, weighted is chosen, and in the last case, only weighted and colored is chosen, and don't need to specify undirected, for instance. So um, to visualize this, we actually have two kinds of things going on here. We have once the specification of the features that we are interested in, and we have the products that can be generated out of this. So once we uh, consider rather generated products, we will visualize them with this uh, very cute uh, paint screenshot over here. 
So this shows, uh, visualizes the configuration of graph data structures and typically these configuration options can be considered as flags. So flags that can be either true or false and if directed is chosen then the flag is true. So the boolean value actually determines which features are activated or deactivated. So now we can have combinations of features and maybe not all the combinations of features are actually interesting for a certain domain or interesting for certain applications. For instance, if we want to do vertex numbering, then it could be that uh, it's independent of the graph type that we have. It could be we could have uh, directed or undirected edges. It doesn't matter whether we have weights or colors. But in some cases, for instance, shortest path, it could be required to have directed edges um, and weighted edges. So if you think of the shortest path uh, on a map for navigation, then we might need weights to express what is the distance, what is the uh, energy consumption that I need to uh, pass uh, a certain street or a certain, uh, yeah, a certain uh, amount uh, of uh, distance in that map and it might re require directed edges. So we have these uh, combinations and the question is which of them are valid and of course this depends on the domain and this is typically decided by domain experts but at some point in time uh, this needs to be checked also uh, once the user uh, applies the configuration either by command line parameters or configuration files or uh, with preference dialogues. In all of the cases, this um, uh, configuration needs to be checked to understand whether this configuration or combination is actually valid or not. So these dependencies between options or features must be checked either when the configurations are loaded at startup or whenever those options are loaded or changed at runtime. So in the first part of the lecture, we looked at runtime variability, uh, we looked at configuration options and different uh, possibilities how to actually define configuration options to provide configuration options as a user. So we looked at command line parameters, preference dialogues and configuration files. Uh, and we also considered the validity of combinations and how this affects dependencies uh, or how those are affected by dependencies between those features. Uh, for the further reading, we recommend uh, chapter three in uh, Sven Appel's book, uh, uh, et al's book uh, on uh, software product lines, uh, where there's uh, uh, an introduction to runtime variability. And for the practice, we recommend that you think of what practical examples do you know of already that make use of runtime variability? Uh, how does the configuration take place? And is the configuration checked for validity? And how uh, how is it checked? So whether you've you've seen cases where a configuration or this uh, combination was invalid. We recommend uh, doing this practice, and uh, we'll see you back uh, for the next part of the lecture. Enjoy the silence.